Okay. Our lesson today is about uh, tissues, glands, and membranes, and potentially um, maybe learning about the diseases that happen there. I've scanned in a lot of my book because I just think my book was designed directly for the massage therapist. A lot the book they want me to use is designed for a university student learning about the systems of the body. And that's great. It's important. Um, but I think it misses the simplicity that we need as therapists. We're not going for a medical degree. We're just here to um, be fascinated by the body, to be able to understand the body, so that when we're working on the body, easily enough, we can um, help people heal. So... I'm going to pull a lot from different sources just to get these lessons to pan out correctly. I want you guys to pass the exams and really just enjoy thoroughly what we're going to be going through. So um, we're going to start here with histology. Histology is a uh, histo or hist is tissue and ology is the study of. So this is the study of tissues. As a massage therapist, you might be asking yourself, why is this important for me to understand? Uh, you might think that only tissue, the only tissue you uh, should know about is muscle tissue. And that's important, but having a strong understanding of tissue structure and the function of it, of it is important to be a good therapist. For example, if you're massaging a person with significant edema, swelling, what should be your concerns? Where is the fluid buildup occurring and why? As you begin to learn about the structure of tissues, the functional aspects of these tissues will become much more clear and apparent. One of the most important tissues of which the massage therapist should have a strong knowledge of is general connective tissue. Um, and this principle, building material of the skin, fascia, ligaments, tendons, joint capsules, and believe it or not, the fibrous framework of all muscles. In this chapter, we're going to understand um, and begin our foundation on all this stuff. So, I kind of just partially read that. Man, I'm going to get thirsty in here. Let's uh, scroll down here. Uh, okay, so I know this is kind of, it sounds silly, but this is something that helps me to remember the types of tissues because we have four principal tissues. Um, and to memorize these, I say semen. I know, sounds goofy, sounds a little bit inappropriate, but it helps me because if you look down here, we have four different types here. Epithelial tissue. Um, epithelial tissues cover the body surface and it lines the internal cavities with uh, this tissue. So uh, this is kind of a, a funny picture here that someone has drawn of, of how it kind of uh, looks like, uh, I guess, under a microscope. Covering and lining tissue is a good note to keep under epithelial tissues. That's the E in semen. Um, epithelial covering and lining. Something to remember is that this tissue is avascular. There's no direct blood supply to epithelial tissue. Um, it's usually just absorbed through, for example, I'm just going to tell you guys, like your skin is epithelial tissue. There's no direct uh, blood vessels going to your skin, otherwise you'd be bleeding all the time. Your skin receives its nutrients uh, just by virtue of being close to vascular tissue, uh, which is the underlining layers. So that's kind of good notes to have for epithelial tissue. Covering and lining tissue, it's avascular, there's no blood supply. Uh, general distribution, it's always found as a surface tissue. So we're talking, um, it lines internal cavities 
and on top of our it's our skin um, it's going to be basically surface on the outside of organs uh, found on blood vessels as well so pretty good stuff epithelial we know what epi means it means upon Thele is nipple, referring to nipple-like projections of connective tissue that, uh, that it often covers. Okay, let's move on. Uh, connective tissue, or supporting tissue, uh, it's what holds your body together. Here's a good example here. Um, I'm just being wary of the time. We, I have to do 10-minute increments with this program. So... It's good we have about four minutes left so this holds your body together and this is kind of what it looks like here you have a lot of different uh, fibers running back and forth and you can see the cell bodies inside those fibers connective and supporting tissue connects and supports uh, and anchors various body parts but also performs a wide variety of other functions so here's some good notes connective and supporting tissue holding your body together highly vascular lots of blood in your connective tissue so general distribution it's going to have a wide distribution bone tendon fat blood and cartilage this C connective tissue is the C in semen so coming down to the next so remember Hold your body together, lots of blood, highly vascular. And moving on. All right, moving on to nervous tissue. The nervous, oh wow, I skipped muscle tissue, forgive, forgive me. Muscle tissue, muscle is the M in semen, so we have epithelial, connective, and muscle tissue. Uh, okay, helps your body move. Muscle tissue, uh, tissues are composed of cells specialized to contract, shorten, and generate force. In the process, they produce heat and warm, it warms the body. Um, contraction, good, important thing to know. We've learned about a lot about muscle tissue and anatomy, but this is just going to be added uh, stuff. Contracts and produces movement is a good note for that. Uh, general distribution, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth it is found throughout the body and in many organs. Pretty simple stuff. We, we know a lot about that. So let's move on before we have to uh, pause. Okay. Nervous tissue is the N in semen. Uh, it is the communicating system throughout the body you can kind of see here it looks like wires so nervous tissue consists of cells specialized for initiation whoa initiation and transmission of electrical signals which rely oh my gosh wow can someone read for me relay information from one part of the body to another wire like cells general distribution brain spinal cord and nerves and hey Look at that, I got an extra note for semen, connective, muscle, epithelial, and nervous. These are the four different types of tissues. Uh, hey, quiet you. Don't be talking while I'm talking. Shh. My dogs are talking, sorry. Um, share this stuff with, some, with someone you love. It's going to help you remember, and they're going to appreciate you for it. So, good on you. Keep it up. Um, review this page again and again. I'll probably probably try to email this to you. What did I tell you?
Okay, we're back. Um, okay. So let's dive more into epithelial cells and the tissue, tissues and all that good stuff. Epithelial tissue or epithelium forms protective coverings for the body. It is the main tissue of the skin's outer layer. It also forms membranes, ducts, and the linings of body cavities and hollow organs, such as the organs of the digestive, respiratory, and urinary tracts. So the cell shape of epithelial tissue, uh, pretty simple stuff. Canic weird eight, figure eight shaped. Um, we have different names for the shapes. So there's squamous which would be flat. There's cuboidal, which would be cube-like, and then columbar, which is obviously in a column. Do I say columbar? It's columnar. <laughs> wow. Spicy, if you know what I mean. Okay, moving on. Pretty simple stuff. Hopefully you'll get this in my email. Uh, moving down. Number of layers. So if you have one layer, you're going to call it simple. If you have multiple layers, it's called stratified. So let me give you an example of this. You have layers of your skin that would be simple squamous epithelium or simple cuboidal epithelium. Now, if you wanted to say multiple layers like this over here, you would say, like, for example, these cells, if you look at them, they're flat. So you'd say stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium. So that's kind of how you'd use a therapist. And uh, basically, is out learning.
Okay, guys. Um, this section of video, I didn't get any um, audio for, I guess. So I'm going over this section again. Um, there are four basic types of connective tissue. There's um, general connective tissue. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then there's. Oh, okay. So, um, yes, I'm not actually controlling the mouse right now. It's just being controlled by someone else. Okay, so general connective tissue is uh, soft tissue, muscle, and skin. Um, I know muscle is its own type of tissue, but it is considered connective. Uh, it's going to have, under general connective tissue, you're going to also have uh, adipose tissue and reticular tissue. Reticular, I believe, is... Um, because I believe I actually Google it. Um, web of tissue. Oh, come on, you guys. Stop making so much noise. Okay. Yes, define reticular. Um, characterized by a fine network or net-like structure, and you can see that net-like structure as we see in the little picture right there. So a lot of different connective stuff there. The next level of connective tissue would be cartilage, which would be firm or rubbery. Um, you can see in that picture the tissue types are kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure what all those branches are. It looks kind of like Christmas trees. Um, your cartilage is connected to your skeleton. I think that's what I'm saying when I'm, it's mostly associated with skeleton. Um, yes, and then continuing, bone is actually part of connective tissue. Uh, it gives you support, and I can promise you one thing. If you didn't have this kind of support, you probably wouldn't be alive. You can quote me on that, because bones are important. So hard connective tissue, believe it or not. Um, supportive. Honestly, I forgot all the stuff that I was saying here, so you're going to see my mouse go around and play around on the screen. Oh, and then finally, blood as a unique connective tissue is actually a circulatory connective tissue. There is a substance in between the cells uh, that counts as connective tissue. So it's fluid connective tissue, carries nutrients to the body by moving it throughout the vessels. So we're talking like lymphatic tissue and blood, um, which is just, lymphatics are just filtered blood, um, but that counts as connective tissue. As you can see at the bottom, we have a anagram, or whatever you call those things that help you remember, uh, CBGB. Um, I remembered it saying that it, it sounded kind of familiar, like, oh, I have the heebie-jeebies, but it's the CBGBs. I don't know. I, it's something that you guys can work on. But C would be cartilage, B would be bone, general is general connective tissue, and blood. So CBGBs, I'm just pointing out that we have one for semen, which is C-M-E-N as the types of tissue, and then the CBGBs as the types of connective tissue. So there we are, folks. Um, remember this, share this with people. If it's a cat or a dog that you love and you want to share it with them, it's still going to help you to remember because you shared it with them. But become teachers uh, in your own right, and you're going to learn this a lot better um, than having this old guy named Will start yapping at you. So you guys, Video is going to go on for a little bit more. Uh, we're going to cut it off though, and uh, I'm going to separate this video from the next video. The next video, we're going to focus on skin directly. Um, so don't pay attention to anything else in this video. Um, just have a wonderful day. I'm going to try to release these videos throughout the week so we can get it all finished up. Uh, thank you so much for being understanding. Uh, one more thing before I go. I'm actually going to um, 
select a time during the week, which is most likely going to be Tuesday mornings at 9, where I'm going to be available for face-to-face -face chat if you have questions. Um, so I'm going to connect with Amber and try to see if I can figure out the Zoom situation because then Tuesdays at 9, I can open up Zoom and we can all just kind of chat if you have questions. If you don't, it's not required to be there. So thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I believe this will be it.